Welcome to Advanced Geomechanics. My name is Nicolás Espinosa, and I'm the instructor for this class that you can attend at UT Austin as PG383 in the Department of Petroleum and Geosystems Engineering, and you can also follow in YouTube. If you have any questions, please send me an email to the email address uh, shown here at the bottom, or also a comment either through YouTube or through Twitter. In the next few minutes, I'm going to explain very briefly what are the contents of this class. First of all, we'll explore the basics of mechanics and what is the stress tensor. We will see uh, the linear algebra required to uh, compute, for example, the principal stresses, principal stress directions, stresses on an arbitrary plane in three dimensions, and how that applies to stresses on fractures and faults. We'll see how to plot those stresses with a 3D more circle, like here shown at the bottom, or also through the stress invariants, I1, J2, P, and Q. We'll see an application example about the calculation of stresses for the subsurface and how and why it is important to calculate those stresses and to see why it is important that those are different from each other. Uh, for that purpose, we start using some simplified equations uh, called as uh, one-dimensional models that allow us to calculate the in situ stress. In this example, we see the minimum horizontal stress. This is particularly important for predicting the geometry of a hydraulic fracture in the subsurface. After we finish this uh, first part, we'll go a little bit more in detail into more complex consistent relationships, and especially we'll talk about vertical transverse isotropic media, uh, something which describes better the deformation of uh, sedimentary rocks than just linear elasticity. We'll see what are the fine dependent coefficients of such model and how we can measure those in the laboratory and also in the field. After we get to know the basics of continuum mechanics, we'll apply these equations uh, to uh, some problems, like for example, the stress perturbation near a wellbore or stress perturbation near a fracture. We will use the finite element method in order to solve these stress perturbations. And uh, we'll use examples like this one that predicts what is the stress influence or the stress shadow of a, an open fracture in a medium. After we finish with this first part, we'll jump into thermohydromechanical coupled processes. And first we'll start with pore elasticity and the influence of pore pressure in the stress partition within a porous solid. We'll see what is, for example, the PO coefficient and how we utilize the theory of pore elasticity to the the theory of pore elasticity to calculate perturbations in stress due to changes in pore pressure. Here you see the example of depletion and the changes of stresses caused within the reservoir and outside the reservoir when you decrease the pore pressure in a given formation. And what are the implications outside the reservoir, like for example here, subsidence. We'll also see the part of thermomechanical coupled processes and what is the influence of changes of temperature in stresses. This is something particularly relevant today that geothermal energy is becoming, or is getting more and more attention and probably becoming uh, something real in the next uh, decades. After we're done with the thermo uh, poro mechanical process, we'll also see chemomechanical coupled processes. We'll see what is the influence of change of salinity in the pore water of a shale, how that leads to shale uh, expansion. And we'll also see something which is a little bit less known, which are the chemomechanical coupled uh, processes uh, derived by processes of adsorption. What you see in this image, is an engineered solid that reacts due to the changes in environmental humidity. And uh, similar to this, there are some rocks, especially organic rocks, which deform due to the absorption of fluids 
like uh, natural gas or like carbon dioxide. And this applies to reservoirs as well. After we're done with these first parts, we'll move into inelasticity and plasticity. We'll calculate what are the deformations beyond the elastic point. And in order to do that, we'll use uh, constitutive models such as the Morcolom model and also models with a cap like the Cam Clay model. Here we'll calculate the matrices and we'll put together the matrices that we need in order to predict these strains beyond the elastic point. This is particularly relevant for uh, soft sediments where significant plastic strains can occur during the life of a wellbore or during the life of a reservoir. After we are done with this uh, part, we'll jump into hydraulic fracture propagation. We'll start with the very basics of linear elastic fracture mechanics, how linear elastic fracture mechanics coupled with fluid models within a fracture can predict the propagation of a single fracture, of a single planar fracture. And after we understand that, we'll jump into multi-stage uh, hydraulic fracturing in a medium which is not isotropic and in which the stresses may change as a function of depth and as a function of location. And we're going to see that that's principally what leads to these characteristic shapes for fractures which are far from what we expect in the ideal case. We'll also see the basics of induced uh, and uh, micro seismicity and where that originates uh, during processes of, of uh, hydraulic fracture propagation and also during processes of uh, fluid injection. So this is all the material that we're going to see and I hope you stick around and you check the videos in these playlists.